Hi, I am Vicky Clements with a beard, and I used to make stuff like this. In this video, I am making a tall perch. Now, the construction is quite simple, but first, I had actually forgotten that it happened. This was all filmed a few months ago. Not that the weather looks any different from right now, unfortunately, but I will say as far as falls go, I think that one was pretty impressive, seeing as I managed to set the saw down as I was falling. Anyway, with safety issues resolved, I'm beginning construction on the base of the perch, which will essentially just be four feet in a plus pattern. Now I'm probably cutting these feet a little short for the overall height of the perch. It's a bit of a balance between aesthetics and functionality. While longer feet are obviously more stable, they don't look as good. And on the topic of aesthetics, current taper that I'm adding to the feet, while it doesn't add any functionality, it does make the base look better. And to make that taper, I'm just using a tapering jig that I put together with some scrap wood. This jig allows me to safely push the 2x4 through the saw at an angle. With the four feet cut, I'm now cutting three additional boards for the rest of the base, which will also give me a way to attach the base to the main post, which I'm measuring out now. Again, on the topic of aesthetics, form over function, I'm taking an extra step to plane the surface of the wood. This will remove the top rough layer, as well as any printing, leaving a smoother finished surface. So while there's no functional reason to do this, it will look better, and you'll be less likely to get splinters from it when handling the perch. Dust blowers like this are always very handy to have, not only in a workshop, but just around the house. These holes that I'm drilling will be used to attach the base to the main post. I'm drilling them now so that they are straight and level, and this will make the final assembly go much smoother. With all my base pieces laid out, I'll begin assembly of the base. The third piece of board that I have placed is being used as a spacer. Once I've begun gluing on the feet, I can remove this board, which will leave the correct size gap for the main post to slot into. We begin by applying some glue to the first foot. However, before attaching it, I'm wrapping that spacer board in a few sheets of paper just to give some extra tolerance and make it easier to remove. And securing that foot on with glue and screws. Now with two feet on, there's enough structure to remove that center placeholder. Gluing on the final two feet in an overlapping pattern, forming a plus shaped base. Moving on to the main post and attaching the actual perch to the top. There's many ways you could go about doing this. I'm simply just using a metal bracket. Secured with screws.
Now this next step, again, is purely for aesthetics, and is something I should have done before assembling the base, and that's cutting a 45 degree angle on the base supports. So while it is a bit more difficult to do at this stage, it is still doable and will make it look much better. Now to finally slot the main post into the base, and drilling that hole all the way through, allowing me to place two bolts securing the main post to the base. These bolts can then later be removed, making it possible to disassemble the perch for easier transport. A quick sanding just to clean off any glue or remaining rough areas. and a coat of shellac just for some extra protection. Stuff smells awful, but it dries really fast. Now just like the bow perch, covering the top with some AstroTurf. Folding it in half for some additional cushion, and securing it to the perch with a few staples. Inserting an eye bolt that can be used for a tether or a creon slime. Now you may remember this bit from the carbon paper video. As you'll soon see, I actually had a plan for this all along. Sanding off the edges with a nail file which is essentially just sandpaper on a stick, and they work great for small objects with complex curves and corners. Setting it upon some pushpin standoffs and hitting it with a quick coat of black spray paint. This activator spray will cause the super glue to instantly bond, allowing me to place this final bit of decoration. And with that, we have a completed tall perch. Now, while this perch may be doggo approved, more importantly, It's Viper approved. This is Viper. She is about a six to eight month red tail hawk. She's called a passage red tail because she doesn't have a red tail yet. Um, she was trapped from the wild and she is used as a falconry bird. She is used for hunting. Um, you have to have the proper licensing and everything to actually quote unquote own a red tail hawk. You have to have your facilities and you have to have a sponsorship for two years. As an apprentice, you can either have a red tail or a kestrel. Um, red tails are easier to uh, maintain the first year. So that's what you usually start out with. Um, Viper will get her actual red tail next year after the molt. And we use perches like this for training. And they know exactly what the perch means. They know it's food. And yeah, Viper really enjoys her perches made by Nick. <laughs> My sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for Diego. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. <laughs>